This is the Leica Q2, a 47 megapixel compact full frame camera with a built in 28 millimeter Sumalux lens. And while it does pack quite the punch for such a tiny little camera, it also retails for around $6,000. I've been shooting on the Leica Q2 for the last six months, and while I absolutely love the experience shooting with it, it is certainly not for everyone. So I wanted to give you my honest, long-term opinion to help determine whether or not it's worth it. Let's get into it. As crazy as it may sound, at between five to $6,000, the Leica Q2 is one of the most economical ways that you can achieve the Leica look. Now, what is the Leica look? It's essentially a shallow depth of field, deep blacks, and beautiful rich color rendering. I'd also argue that part of the Leica look is how you look when you've got a Leica around your neck. It has this aura to it that even those around you who know nothing about photography certainly gravitate towards. It's meant to hang around your body rather than being stuffed inside of a camera bag because like the images it's capturing, a Leica is a work of art. This is actually one reason to consider the Reporter Edition. It's stripped of any branding in hopes that thieves won't be as easily drawn to the eye-catching red dot. Plus, I dig the green. But what makes the Q2 so great? Well, for starters, there's the lens. As mentioned, the Q2 is equipped with a Sumalux 28mm f1.7 built in, meaning that it's not an interchangeable lens. Now, some might argue that this lens makes the camera worth it on its own, because if you were to buy a Sumalux 28mm from Leica, that would run you around $8,000. Now, a 28mm isn't for everyone, but if it isn't for you, that's all right, because this actually does not feel like a 28mm. It feels much more like a 24 millimeter. Let's compare it to this 24 millimeter on a Sony. And you'll notice that we get almost the exact same field of view. Now for me, I'm okay with a slightly wider lens. I've come from a landscape background and 24 millimeters is one of my favorite focal lengths, but this is decidedly advertised as something that it's not. So it's worth being aware of. At a 1.7 maximum aperture, you're obviously getting some positive low light performance and subject isolation, though 28 or 24 isn't really gonna make everything that bocalicious. Like all Leica lenses, it's super sharp, especially when paired with the 47 megapixel sensor. And I'm consistently impressed by how much latitude you have to crop in, which is handy loads of times given that fixed focal length, but more on that in a moment. All of this combined with Leica's color rendering make the image quality incredible. It really is a treat to edit these images, and you really don't have to push them very far to get an image you're happy with, especially when it comes to skin tones. By the way, if you wanna support me to pay off my credit card bill for this camera, a really easy way to help out is to tap the subscribe button. It actually helps out a lot, and it helps me to make more videos for all of you. So over the last six months of very heavy use, I've also been very impressed with the build quality. As mentioned, this is something you'll likely have on your body often, meaning it's prone to bruises and bumps, and it certainly feels like it can take a beating. I've already dropped it once on the pavement, and aside from a small ding on the side, it's doing just fine. And from a build perspective, there's a few additional things that are actually kind of hard to capture in a video like this, like the way the lens cap just is perfectly machined to fit onto the lens, or the way that the lens hood smoothly twists perfectly into place, or the way the macro ring twists to reveal the adjusted focus scale, and now the $290 battery just takes that little second press before it's fully ejected, and yes, a spare battery will run you about $300. And while there may not be a charging port for the camera if you want to charge that battery, that allows the camera to be fully weather sealed, which is an improvement over its predecessor, the Leica Q, which lacked that weather sealing. If you're a street or travel photographer, having that peace of mind that you can capture images in all weather conditions is incredible. The build quality plus its tiny size means I've begun taking it with me basically everywhere. My girlfriend calls it the moments that matter camera because it's so easy to bring around that I end up capturing more of the everyday life and the moments that matter to me rather than always focusing on chasing the bangers and that highlight reel that I'm always chasing after with my Sony. In an era of social media and short form video, it's really made photography fun again. Heck, I've even brought it with me to a bunch of weddings after swearing off of weddings as a wedding videographer. But the Q2 is not without hefty annoyances. As much as I love it, there are some things that you should really be aware of before you spend your hard-earned dollars on one. First and foremost, this might be obvious, but it's really hard to justify this being the only camera that you own, given how limited it is. Being limited to one focal length is obviously an issue. The video quality is pretty subpar. This is definitely not a video camera. And with that one focal length, sure you can crop in, and the Q2 has a nifty way of allowing you to crop in while shooting. Pressing the digital zoom button on the back of the camera places a box inside your frame, and when you open Lightroom, it pre-crops to that composition. But it's non-destructive, so you can change that crop in post. But being unable to truly change lenses is eventually going to wear you down if that's all you have. You'll want more, but you can't because this beautiful lens is permanently glued to the body. 
The Q2 also really causes you to slow down and be more intentional with your shots. Now, while this might be a good thing in the minds of some, it's not necessarily for the right reasons. First, the files are huge. The raw file is over 85 megabytes, which like, yes, it is a 47 megapixel sensor, but the Sony A1 files are 50 megapixels and the file size is 50 megabytes. These huge Leica files cause major slowdowns, both in file transferring and the operability of the camera. This is likely because the Q2 uses the Maestro 2, the same image processor as the original Leica Q, which is only 24 megapixels and was released in 2015. Another contribution to being more intentional is that, like many Leicas, it prioritizes design over function. If you don't have that little thumbs up mount, an additional $250 purchase, mind you, it can feel like you're gonna drop it. But if you do have it, it makes it hard to turn the dials and adjust the ISO and use the little micro adjustment on the right side. So instead, you have to take your camera away from your face, make the adjustment, and then bring it back. Potentially great for being intentional, but also a recipe for missing the shot. This is true for adjusting many of the settings as well. Autofocus, white balance, drive speed, etc., all requires you to open up the menus. By no means is this my biggest qualm, but it's certainly worth considering. Now, we really need to talk about the screens, both the EVF and the LCD screen on the back. By today's standards, the EVF does leave some to be desired from a resolution standpoint. The LCD screen, on the other hand, has one very strange problem. Regardless of what settings you have set to display on the camera, whether it's none or all of them, when you half press the shutter to autofocus or lock in the exposure, this little black bar comes up that blocks the bottom of the screen to display the exposure settings. I can't tell you how many times my framing has been messed up by being off center or top heavy because you can't see the bottom 10th of the screen and it looks like it's not part of the frame. This isn't the case with the EVF, but damn if it isn't super annoying on the back screen. But that's not the worst part. The worst part is that the two screens are not color calibrated the same. The EVF has a nice warm tone to it, whereas the LCD screen is almost cooler and a little bit green shifted, especially in comparison. Now, as I mentioned, the raw images still come out looking great, but when you're reviewing the images on the back of the screen, it's really confusing and not really clear what you're gonna get. For a five to $6,000 camera, that's pretty damn unacceptable in my mind. The LCD screen does have some nice touch functionality, however, which is great for tapping those settings in the menu or for tap to focus. Yet another important thing to consider is that more than most other cameras, the Q2 is a depreciating asset. This is unlike other cameras where only half of the investment is depreciating. The body depreciates, but the lenses hold their value quite well, and you can continue to upgrade your body while continuing to be invested in that lens system. If you're buying something like the Leica M11, you're investing in the M mount lenses that will continue to be useful and valuable as you decide to upgrade to something later, say the M12. Or if you're buying the Sony or Canon mirrorless, you're investing in the EF or the R mount lenses that you'll continue to lose long after you've decided to upgrade your body. But not with a Q2. Since this beautiful Sumalux 24 millimeter, pretending to be a 28 millimeter, is strapped to that body for life. Now I feel like I've spent the bulk of this video complaining about the Q2, but I really do love it. The most important thing to me is that I really enjoy shooting with it. As someone whose job it is to have a camera in their hand, it makes photography fun. And as a wise woman once said, it sparks joy. But this camera isn't for everyone. The Q2 isn't a workhorse. It isn't going to solve all of your needs or many of them for that matter. It's a treat yourself camera. Is buying this camera a good financial decision? No. Are the images beautiful and is it a joy to shoot with if you can ignore all those weird quirks that I've been going on about? Yes. That said, if you want something with a similar feel, you're probably much better off buying something like the Fuji X100V or even the original Leica Q for about half the price. But realistically, you should probably just be buying about any other mirrorless camera system out there. So if you wanna be nicer to me than I was to the Leica Q2 during this review, consider playing Thumb War with the like button and consider subscribing as well. I think you'll like watching this video next and here's a playlist of my YouTube shorts to keep you entertained while I'm making the next video for y'all. Peace.